Rob from Georgia here with you. It is week number 10 here at Schizophrenic Synopsis. Been a long day. Man, this week's theme, Animals That Attack. And while I'll take it, there I go again. I'm not even going to edit that stuff out. I'm going to take on Adam Green's 2010 film, Frozen. And uh, my counterpart, my better half, is going to take, uh, take on Alfred Hitchcock's seminal classic, The Birds. And uh, two really completely different situations. And uh, so I'll be, uh, again, taking a look at this. And uh, man, Frozen. Well, there's the Anchor Bay release of this film. And I'll be honest, uh, you know, I watched this movie uh, way, way back when I first picked it up. It's been a long time since I revisited it, and I did revisit it, it last night. And uh, I was, more than anything, I was overwhelmed uh, just with this sense of uh, dread. And uh, just, um, I don't know, this movie works. It really worked on me on levels that, quite frankly, it surprised me last night. And uh, if there is one word that really sums up this film more than any other word, I think, it's just the word practical. Everything Adam Green does in this film, it's practically done. I mean, it is done. No CGI, no green screen, no sound stage. I mean, these poor kids are stuck up in a chairlift and they are there. Well, let's talk about this film for a minute. If you've never seen Frozen, uh, I would hope you know who Adam Green is. The Hatchet series and whatnot. And uh, like uh, Eli Roth and others, man, what a just a phenomenally fun guy. Uh, the Holliston series, of course. Uh, fun guy to listen to and talk and uh, just, a, just an awesome down-to-earth guy. And, uh, but anyways, this film really involves uh, three kids who are gone uh, skiing. A uh, girl and her boyfriend and, uh, and his friend. Uh, they're actually childhood friends going all the way back. I mean, their whole lives they've been friends. And so she's sort of this third wheel component, which is really interesting. Uh, but anyways, they sort of scheme their way. They don't have uh, quite uh, the, enough money uh, to get on the ski lift. And so they're able to, uh, via her, scheme their way. And uh, once on the ski lift, you know, they'll enjoy a day skiing and whatnot. And uh, there'll come a point, though, uh, where they get, uh, time is running out before they can uh, get one last uh, ride up the mountain. And here's where films like this, you know, uh, some films work and some don't. And I'll just be, you know, as far as I'm concerned, this film worked in such a high level in terms of could this really happen? And uh, I know Adam, you know, Adam Green defends this principle, uh, you know, to the end in terms of his belief that not only does it happen, uh, but it could happen. Now, maybe, uh, as he says, there's no, uh, he doesn't have any documented uh, evidence uh, to suggest that, uh, anyone has had to go through this, but people have been caught stuck up on a ski lift before and uh, it's created for some very precarious situations. And so, uh, and so it's not out of the realm of possibilities and the way he sets it up, you get this guy who they've schemed, who's working the chairlift and once uh, they go up on their last ride, he, you think he's there to the very end, but his buddy comes up to, uh, to basically uh, replace him because there's a meeting going down in one of the buildings and apparently he's been, uh, he's gotten the shaft, he's gonna have to work the following weekend, uh, which he had already asked off. So that creates for a unique situation where out of uh, anger and frustration, he'll you know, let the guy replace him and he'll start to uh, head down to the building and the guy's like, uh, I can't remember which one initiates it, but it's said that, yeah, look, there's just three gotta come down. Once they're down, shut everything down, right? Well, this is a new guy and he's, and, you know, he has no idea who the three are. Well, after a few minutes or so, three come down. And so he figures, well, one, two, three, good to go, we're good to go. <sighs> shut everything down. They're probably about halfway up the mountain, I think. And man, I'm telling you, man, you know, from the minute the lights start going blackout, 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 right up the mountain, and then they're just put into the darkness, and they're left alone on the ski lift. Man, I'm telling you, man, the absolute best of what you see in movies like this 
it, it's nothing but the best of the best, man. Uh, being that it's all practical, being that they're actually sitting on a chairlift, um, you know, it puts everyone in the conditions. I mean, they'll get down below zero. They'll be uh, they'll be out there, you know, during the, not only these conditions, but during. Uh, I think there's a moment where uh, there's a, they're calling for uh, on the page. They're calling for a sleet storm. They don't even have to break out the sleet machines because it's actually sleeting. And I mean, it's just crazy what they've had to deal with. But ultimately, you know, they're they're faced with this idea that. Uh, the fact is, it's Sunday and it's closing the ski lift uh, resort, and it's not reopening to Friday, and they're stuck, and no one's going to come get them. I mean, that's just the reality of this situation, and so they're going to be pressed into making some decisions in terms of survival, and that's where the wolves come in. And man, I am telling you, it is. Uh, it's it's what's weird is they have this conversation. They're having this conversation on the chair before things start to go sour. And uh, I think I can't remember if it was the girl, uh, Sean Ashmore, who plays Joe, and uh, Emma Bell, man, she plays Parker, and she is phenomenal. And the boys are too. Uh, Kevin Zegers is Dan, and uh, there's a surprise entry here though. Kane Hodder plays Cody. He he's driving the uh, ski lift uh, or truck, and uh, he'll be like their last chance to survive. And unfortunately, because of him looking back. Uh, backing his way out, even though he's directly under them, he'll not see the stuff they're throwing down. Uh, and so Kane Hodder ends up being uh, their last best chance of uh, survival. And uh, that will just kind of pass on by. But uh, once they make that choice and it becomes a matter of them versus not only their environment, but the wolves, man, choices will be made. And ultimately, a lot of uh, a lot of conversational pieces. Uh, you'll see a lot of character change. Uh, Emma, uh, Emma's character uh, Parker. You know, her and uh, Dan. I mean, they're really sort of at each other's throats uh, quite a bit because, as I say, he treats her sort of as a third wheel. Uh, he does. He sees her as sort of the one who's taken his best friend away from him. And so there's a lot of conflict there. But that conflict will slowly dissolve through the reality that if they don't figure something out quick, they're going to die. And uh, so, I mean, there's a lot of obstacles to be overcome. And one of the things that you learn watching this movie or uh, the making of it and whatnot that uh, had no idea that the, the lines that the ski lift travel up uh, the way are so razor sharp that you couldn't even apparently slide down the line with a chain without the chain being cut in two they're that razor sharp and so you get a scene where one of the characters i think is dan who's up there trying to um climb uh, it'll become very apparent that you're not going to get out of this mess without in an extreme amount of sacrifice and maybe the ultimate sacrifice um so you know, if you've never seen, uh, if you've never seen Frozen, uh, what's really fun about this movie is some of the tagline was uh, one of the taglines was uh, uh, this movie will do for skiers what uh, Jaws did to swimmers kind of thing. And I will say, I mean, you know, watching this film, uh, I don't intend on being stuck on any ski lift anytime too soon. Um, it really does bring an air of believability that uh, you just don't find in a lot of movies like this. I mean, right from the very beginning to the very end, in fact, uh, not to give it away, but there is a scene that as it unfolds, man, I mean, it is exactly the way in reality it could unfold. I mean, it, it's just... Man, Adam Green and the writers and whatnot, they just poured a lot of thought uh, into this film as, a, uh, as an experience uh, to be shared in uh, terror, what it's like to be just uh, stuck in an environment well, it's you against animals, per se. And uh, although, uh, you know, Hitchcock, uh, Hitchcock uh, on the other side of things, he brings the, uh, he brings the animal element to the people, Adam Green takes the people to the element, right? And uh, puts them in a situation that is going to forever change their lives. And man, I'm telling you, Adam Green created quite a memorable film in Frozen. And uh, I mean, geez, I don't know what else uh, to say. I mean, it's uh, 
just the issue of the uh, the wolves. I mean, these wolves for all practical purposes. I mean, they're real wolves. They got trainers and everything, but the characters uh, were put in very real situations where they were acting counter to animals that it provoked the wrong way could have potentially created for a very big problem. Thankfully, that never happened. Uh, but as, uh, as Sean Ashmore shares, there was one moment where uh, his, his eyes and the eyes of, I think it was the charcoal-colored wolf, uh, their eyes sort of lock on. And uh, he said there was a moment there where he thought he was going to just unload in his pants. And uh, so, I mean, some very real situations, but thankfully everything went well. They survived the experience altogether in terms of filming. And I think the uh, final product was, uh, I mean, it's uh, films rarely get this good. And so, uh, what an awesome, what an awesome film. If you have never seen Frozen, I definitely, definitely would check it out. Uh, even pick it up, you probably could get it really cheap on Amazon. And, uh, Pair it up, man. Pair it up with the birds. I'm really curious to see what James is going to bring on the other side of things. And uh, what, a, what a Hitchcockian, just classic, uh, involving animal terror uh, right on the other side. But this is a different film and, uh, and a little bit of a different segue into that. And uh, it ought to give us a little bit of cause of, uh, I guess, just warning that uh, don't wander out too far. Put yourself into a situation where you might, uh, you might just regret uh, being in that situation. So anyways, uh, I guess I'll just wrap it up there. And uh, when animals attack, uh, that is this week's theme and uh, plenty more where this came from. So uh, uh, pray, or, yeah, I was going to say pray. I am praying that you, uh, that you not only hit the like button, but leave a comment and uh, hit the sub as well. Give us a sub. We'd really appreciate that. And uh, man, as we uh, head closer to the holidays, just even now, I wish you everyone an early, early Merry Christmas and whatnot. Hope everyone's having an awesome December. And uh, man, as always, we end these things with Go Bill.